Welcome to Betty's Kitchen. Today we're making turkey croissant. And the reason for making that is that we had a little trip uh, to the Julep Cup in Lexington, Kentucky, and what I ordered was their turkey croissant. So you might think that it's gonna be a little crescent-shaped sandwich that has sliced turkey in it or something like that, but it wasn't like that at all. And if you saw that video, you saw that it was made from puff pastry, and inside that puff pastry was a delicious blend of turkey. It seemed to be, to me, all white meat. So I decided to use a turkey breast. Um, it seemed to me that there were no chopped up vegetables, no celery, no carrots, no onion, nothing like that to have to worry about. It was just a mixture of a very rich gravy with turkey meat that was cooked to perfection. So what I'm going to do is to start with the turkey and this is what I bought. So this is a butterball turkey breast roast and it's three pounds. Now it's packaged up like this so what I need to do is to get this uh, loose. I'm going to use scissors and then I'm going to take it to the sink and rinse it down. So here's what I've got. I have my three pounds of turkey breast meat and it's in a little net like this. Yours may not come that way, but if it does, uh, it's really useful. It keeps it together as it's roasting. And then there was a gravy packet in here. If you choose to use that, that can be the gravy that you have that goes with your meat. So how easy is that? I plan to make my own gravy from the stock that we get from the turkey and perhaps a lot of you will not get a gravy packet with yours so you need to see that. Now when you put this in your slow cooker uh, you may add water if you choose to maybe a half cup but I usually don't. I feel like it's diluting the stock and I like to have the stock as rich as possible. And then I add the water when I get ready to add my cornstarch and, and thicken it up and I know how much water I need then. So I have this plugged in and turned on to high and I think it's probably gonna take about four hours or so. I'll check it occasionally, but when it reaches an internal temperature of 170 degrees, we'll know it's ready. One more thing, I have my salt sitting over here and um, what I want to do is to give this a, gener a generous sprinkling of salt. So I'm just going to dip in here so as not to contaminate any of my other salt. And just sprinkle salt. It's been three and one half hours since we started our turkey breast. And I want to show you what it looks like. I have tested it with a thermometer that was set for turkey and it is approximately 170 degrees. It's actually uh, more than that at each of these two ends because it's thicker in the middle um, and it might be even a little more than 170 degrees but that's okay because you definitely want to have it done and if you get it too far cooked then it will be dry. I can tell by looking at it, it's nice and juicy. It's still wrapped up in this netting, which I will take off. But first, we're going to be cooling it down a little bit. Not actually cooling it, we're gonna let it sit and it will cool by itself for about 10 minutes before we do anything with it. I want to show you what was left in our slow cooker. You can see all those nice juices. That's what we're gonna make some gravy from. I did not add any water at any point. So now I have this on my cutting board because I'll be uh, cutting it into small pieces later on. And we'll just put some aluminum foil over that. And it doesn't have to be tucked tightly. Just tint it a little bit. We're back and here's what we have with our turkey. Um, and this is turkey breast and I had it tinted with aluminum foil. I let it sit here for actually an hour or so because I had some other things to do and it doesn't hurt to do that. Um, and then I took the tent off and I'm going to work with that in just a minute but it's going to involve getting my hands greasy so I'm coming over here first and going to the juices that we have. Now I have something that's called a fat separator that I'm going to pour this through and that collects all the debris on top and lets the juice go through and the fat will settle on the top of the liquid. 
and that allows me to uh, be able to have an almost fat-free gravy. So let me do a little bit over here and then we'll be starting our gravy. I did put this in fat side up and you'll see that this is a layer right here that is very fatty. I don't know if you can tell that, but it has a different consistency from here. This is the turkey breast meat, but you can see uh, that starts right there <laughs> and the rest of this up here is fat. So I will be removing the fat and then down here, here's a spot where there really isn't anything I have to worry about. Um, so when I want to get my pieces of turkey, I just want to get some pieces that are of a size that would fit into a little package that I'm going to bake in the oven. So make them as large or as small as you want, but remember they do have to fit in and you don't want them to be a lot of trouble by being too large. So I'll have this chopped up and I'll have the fat removed here. Now in the meantime, we'll start our gravy. Over here I have a pan for the gravy and I'm going to pour into it what I can through that spout until I see that there would be fat going in. If I poured all of it in, I would get the fat, but just the part that's on the bottom goes in, and then we stop about right there. And that should be fairly fat free. Now what I'm going to do with that, that's not a lot of liquid, but it's very concentrated. I'm going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch to one half cup of water over here to the side and I'm going to stir that around and then I will mix that with my pan juices or turkey broth. So that would make a pretty thick gravy. It's thicker than we probably want. So my continuation of this will be to turn that on and stir continuously as it begins to thicken I will add water and I've got two cups here I won't need that much <laughs> but I will make sure that as it needs water it will be fed water right now I have a little work to do and I'll be back to finish up the gravy and the chopped uh, turkey meat and get started with making packets so I finished making the gravy and all I did was come over here turn on the heat and stir like this not letting it uh, get thick in one spot and thin in another spot. Uh, now I did add one quarter cup of water, but I did not add much water at all. And you're probably thinking, what thick gravy? That is very thick for gravy. But for my purposes, I do not want runny gravy. And you'll see why. I'm going to turn this off and bring it over to my workspace and continue. So I'm going to put my gravy here and then I have worked on the meat, uh, the turkey, and it took about half of it to get this much, which I thought would be about right, or I may have some left over even. I don't know how it's gonna work out. But this is a two cup container, and it's pretty much two cups. That goes in with the gravy. And this is our filling for our croissant. So here is our mixture that we're going to use. And you can see why I do not want the gravy to be runny because I'm going to be making packets that are made with uh, dough, which is pastry dough. It was frozen and I thawed it out and you unfold it like this and uh, now it's room temperature and I'm actually going to put one on top of the other. That let's uh, take some scissors and just go down the middle here uh, but now you can cut this into two equal squares and that's the size of a serving. So you're going to get four servings if you use one package of puff pastry sheets. So that's what we're going to use and I don't want them stuck together so each one of them I'm going to bring back apart. So we'll just work with this pair right here. What you're going to do is take some of your mixture, and this is not necessarily designed for these to come out even. It depends on how much you want to put in there, how much you can fit in there, uh, and things of that sort. 
One thing I'd like to mention at this point is that some of you are going to comment to me, looks good, but I would have added potato or carrot or peas or onions or whatever. Well, I would have too, maybe, but I'm trying to replicate uh, what I got at a restaurant. So if you want to add anything that tastes good to you, feel free to do it and put it into this mixture and have it cooked and ready to go in the oven uh, inside a packet, which is pastry shell or pastry sheet. Now I have a little bit of water here. Uh, if you see any splitting of your puff pastry sheet, then you can get it back together like that. So that should be no problem at all. So this goes on top and it just makes our little packet. And then I don't want to really get this glued to the counter. so. I think I can move this pretty easily over to a baking pan. And then I'll do the crimping. I'm going to go to the center even though it won't be ending up at the center. And you might need some water as you do this, but you can just use a fork. So I'll do the other four and try to fit them all in here. Let's see if we swing this around. I think we'll have room for another one here and then here and here. I will make them fit, <laughs> even if I have to trim off the edges. Then we'll be baking these in an oven. So I'll just tell you, it goes to a 350 degree oven and it probably will take about 10 minutes or so. I will be brushing each one of them with an egg wash. So I'll go ahead and get this one out of the way. I have one well beaten egg plus one tablespoon of cold water in here. And you don't want to overdo it, but just try to get a nice coverage. Here are our turkey croissants that we just brought out of the oven, and um, there were four of them. So I'm going to take a bite. I've got my tea all ready here, which is my treat. Once I get finished with this, I get to drink my tea. Um, and I'm going to take just a little bite. I want to get into where the actual turkey and gravy will be. See, it's crisp, crusty and crispy on top. I think I should put this down because it's a little um, bit uh, crisp in terms of cutting through to the bottom. So I want to take the part right here in order to get some crusts and also some of the meat and gravy, or turkey and gravy. That looks like a good bite. And you notice that we did sprinkle parsley over the top. I think that's the way mine came. Um, I didn't go back and look at the video, but I think it was like that, so I had it out in the garden and I decided to put it on. So here's my bite. You can see that it is just turkey and gravy inside there, and I love this kind of crust. Mmm. Really good. I love it. And that flavor is very intense, made like this. But uh, the top and the bottom, and maybe one side <laughs> sometimes, are uh, really not salty at all or not all that flavorful at all. So uh, the way they blend together, it just gives a wonderful taste. I'll take another little bite here. Actually, Rick and I just finished lunch, <laughs> unfortunately, but it still tastes really good. Mm, it's hot. So good. You might want to tame it down a little bit because it gives um, a little bit of salty taste inside. But that can be changed. I, I, I used all of my gravy on four of them. And if you just want to make all of that gravy on eight of them, there's enough flavor there to do it. So give it a try if you find it interesting, and I hope you'll enjoy it.